late last week, you wrote a piece about a number of Twitter users who received a notice from the company saying that they might be targets of a state-sponsored attack. What can you tell us about these notices? So the notices went out to a bunch of people. Um, there isn't really a clear pattern between all of the people that received the notices. And it seems, well, Twitter says that the information that was taken, if any, was you know, usernames, um, email addresses, phone numbers, if you have your phone number registered with Twitter, IP addresses. Uh, Twitter doesn't handle social security numbers or anything like that, so it's not on the scale of, say, like the OPM hack or whatever. Um, but they are saying that this was probably a state-sponsored attack, which is quite unusual. Like, this isn't just sort of run-of-the-mill cyber criminals um, trying to make a buck or two. Um, these are presumably, you know, there's a there's a government. They don't name which government because that would be a little weird. Um there's a government out there that's um, trying to get one of these users, and it's not entirely clear what for. Well, as you say, I mean, they don't say which government itself, but there must be some fairly high contenders on the list. Any guesses to who it was? Uh, no, I actually, I just don't know, because it's a little like looking for a needle in a haystack when they hit so many users. And I've, like, I've uh, I identified, like, maybe, I talked to maybe seven of them for the piece um, when it, when the notices first went out, um, I couldn't really find any clear links between all of these people. Like there were uh, a fair number of Canadian users. Um, there were a lot of people who were, you know, sort of vaguely related to the security community, but it, they were like all over the place really. So there weren't really any particularly very clear links. So one of the first accounts uh, to report the warning was a Canadian nonprofit cold hack. I think we, if you're watching the video, you saw uh, that notice. Uh, can you tell us um, what they do and why they might have been one of the targets? So Cold Hack runs tour relays, um, among a few other things. And so they're, they run computers that are in the tour network and they pass along internet traffic to obscure what it's doing. Um, so Cold Hack was implicated. Uh, they think that they were targeted because um, one of the founding members of Cold Hack uh, is, is a developer with Tor. And so they think that this entire thing is related to Tor. Interesting. So, I mean, Tor obviously has, 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 some, has some very good uses. But I mean, as I understand it, Facebook has a Tor page, but Twitter doesn't at the moment. Is that correct? Yeah, that is true. Okay. So a lot of people uh, were privacy experts that received these warnings. Um, they had two-factor authentication turned on, uh, and they don't report seeing any login attempts. Um, do, do you have any more details about what might be going on? Well, given how many accounts received this notice, um, and then on top of that, in, in the notice it says you might not have been the target of this attack, um, we think that maybe there was like a server breach somewhere, so like a... a larger database was breached um, as, a, as opposed to individual accounts being attacked um, one by one by, through the login page. So that's what I can guess is going on, but Twitter isn't being particularly forthcoming with the details because I guess, you know, there's an ongoing investigation. And um, I mean, this is, this is quite a bit of transparency if you think about it. Like the fact that they went out of their way to tell a bunch of people that they were the targets of state-sponsored attacks. Like that's um, much more transparency than one could expect from a co corporation normally. Well, I mean, we have had so similar warnings in October from Facebook and Google yeah, were on this from case. Yeah, Google and Facebook, in. but that, those were unprecedented as well. So Twitter is following like a wave, but it's it's a new wave. Yes, indeed. Yeah. You don't see the big players doing this. Yeah. Uh, so you, one, you wrote a book this year, The Internet of Garbage. Um, it's a book that's partly about the challenges of moderating content platforms. Uh, how do you think big companies like Twitter and Facebook and Google, how do you think they're prepared to handle these sorts of challenges uh, when it comes to state-sponsored attacks that we've been seeing? Well, it's really interesting, actually. Um, so in my book, I talk a fair bit about spam. And one of the really contentious things about the story is that when they sent out the warnings, uh, the warnings say, oh, here's an EFF surveillance self-defense guide and... Um, a link to the Tor project, you might want to use Tor if you're afraid of a government sniffing out your uh, email address and phone number and IP address. So presumably what Twitter is saying based on what they know about the attack, they're thinking that the attack targeted 
um, people who are otherwise anonymous on Twitter and this uh, this government or whatever is trying to de-anonymize these people. So they should take these steps to protect their identity. Um, but one of the really contentious things about that is that Twitter is not really friendly to Tor users. Um, like the service itself is not friendly to Tor users. Uh, a Twitter spokesperson has told us that Twitter does not censor Tor or block Tor access, but people who try to use Twitter through Tor have a really hard time using it because when Twitter detects Tor activity, it will often assume that you're a bot or um, like a spammer. And then it will throw up like a, a thing that requires you to input a phone number, which means that if you're trying to preserve your anonymity, you have to go out and buy a burner phone with cash. Otherwise, your whole thing is busted. So it just gets like increasingly harder and harder for someone who's trying to preserve like perfect anonymity, which is, you know, that's not um, something that most of us worry about. But the people who do worry about it, like they could have a lot to lose. And um, it's like, you know, not entirely their fault. Um, and I think it's it's interesting because uh, basically, you know, Twitter is out there telling us, oh, we don't we don't block Tor access, but they kind of do just because they have these anti-spam measures in place that make it very hard to use Tor. And that's the case with a lot of services. A lot of services uh, are are basically kind of making it very hard for you to preserve your privacy because they have to also deal with spam and. Yeah, that's just something that um, I, I'm I'm not sure what to say about, but that's increasingly a policy issue that people have to deal with.